Hey, this is Mike, creator of the graphic novel Spectre, A Dark Matter. This is the part three of the uh, coloring your comics using Photoshop tutorials. We're going to pick up right where we left off in video two, where again we have a fully colored uh, character here. This is my character, Spark. And in this third video, we're going to show, we're going to add um, shadows and highlights to give a little dimension to, uh, to this drawing. Uh, one thing I did not talk about in the first two videos, um, which I probably should have, is, is layer order. And uh, in the very first video, I isolated the black lines from the, from the white background, and white background being the bottom layer, and the top layer being the black lines layer. All of the color layers are in between. And I'm going to create a new layer called Shadows. And that I just put above everything because the shadow is going to cover all the other layers except for the black lines layer. So the first thing to do when we're figuring out where shadows need to be is we need to determine where our light source is going to be. So arbitrarily I'm just going to kind of pick up to the left here, upper left hand corner. And we're just going to select uh, a black paint and the pencil tool and just kind of fill in kind of the edges, you know, where might a shadow might be cast. You can just do this quickly. You can always, again, because we use the layers, we can erase if it doesn't look right or adjust. But I'm just going to kind of go over this quickly and see what it looks like. We can always pull back, see how it looks, and go back in. zoom out. So, um, Eventually we're going to add the transparency to this so it's not so dark, but I like to do all the black first. Thing is, is if you don't do all the black at the same time and you add transparency as you're kind of going along, the black is not consistent and then you don't have the same degree of transparency. So I just do all black first and then I'll adjust the transparency later. You can test it to see what it looks like beforehand, but once you add new ink, you go back to 100% opacity. Now I'm running through this pretty quickly. Um, I would usually take my time if I wasn't recording this. But for the sake of time, we'll just do it quickly. Plus, I know how much fun it is to sit here and watch me paint with a mouse. Okay, I'll zoom out and see it. Now, again, uh, maybe I want to smooth this out a bit. And now the boots are black, so I'm not going to add any shadows to the boots, but we will be adding some highlights in a minute, because they're going to be shiny, slick boots. Okay, so now we can kind of sit back and look at this whole thing, and I'm going to go up to my opacity line here, and I usually go about 50%, Let's see what that looks like. So now we have shadows. Now I probably would want to add a shadow like right on these fingers here, so I'm going to go back to 100%, fill in the shadow cast on the fingers, go back to 50%, zoom out and it looks pretty good. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a highlights layer. This will be for lighter items and we're going to use gradients. Put it below my shadow layer. I'm going to select white. First thing I want to do is the boots. Um, so I'm going to go to my 
boots layer. And I'm actually going to select using the rectangular marquee. If I use the move tool and then click over one arrow and then back one arrow, it selects that layer. Now this isolates the black part of the boot. I'm going to go back to my highlights layer, again selecting white, using the gradient tool. I'm going to select the reflected gradient and then I'm going to add a little gradient line that uh, it's going to be kind of like a hot spot line from here to here. So uh, usually I go back a few times and test it. Now that's not what I wanted to do at all. The reason it did that is because the reverse button is checked here. So I'm going to delete that and try again. Uncheck re reverse and try that. And it gives me a nice hot spot there and you can see how how bright that is. And then I'm going to do another one here. And that one I don't like, so I'm going to undo that one and try again. Now, in this particular um, gradient type, I'm going to click with my left button, drag, and then it's going to turn up perpendicular to where I'm at. So basically, I've got some really bright hot spots. Now what I'm going to do is just going to make the opacity really much lower than this. And then I'm going to take my eraser tool. I'm going to select my I'm going to select brush. Brush gives you a, like a less of a hard edge. And I'm just going to kind of sculpt the highlights around the shape of this boot like this. You can see my shadow is bleeding a little over here. I'm going to select shadows and hit delete to get rid of that. And I'm just going to highlight around the heel and the calf a little bit. And over here. And I'm going to step back and see what that looks like. And a little more what I'm looking for. Okay, and I might want to adjust the opacity a little more. So it's not as stark. I'm going to do the second boot. Now, I want to do these individually, so this is going to be left boot highlights. And I'm going to make a layer for right boot highlights. Again, I'm going to select. I'm going to select the boot layer. Mar my marquee tool. Select move. Click the arrow over once, and then once back one pixel to highlight the black of the boot. Go to right boot highlights and select the gradient tool again. Again, I'm going to select a point in roughly in the middle. Drag. And I actually want it to spread more than that, so. The more you drag, the more it spreads. And then we're going to do one this way. Perfect. Again, I'm going to deal, roll down that opacity. Right about there, 30% looks good. My eraser tool with brush mode selected, and I'm just going to sculpt again. Down the heel. Back at that. It's not an exact science, you just kind of do what feels right here. We'll see how it looks. You can always adjust later if it's, you look at it and it just doesn't look right. The final thing I want to do is kind of just add kind of a lightness to uh, the overall image here. You know, if the light is coming from this direction, you can see how I did here where I've got light on the back shoulders. So I kind of want to do that here too. Adding it on the front and it would be anything that would be 
kind of sticking out, so like the chest here, the knee here. So I'll go ahead and select uh, pants. That will highlight that. So I'll do a uh, pants highlight. And um, this time I'm going to select um, the linear gradient. And just give a little burst of light there. And then I'll do the chest here. So I got to select my coat layer. Just really need to select a little bit of the front, isolate it, create a highlight layer. And do the same thing with the linear gradient. That's not enough. That's a little better. Okay. And uh, maybe just a little to the, to the face. Now, you can notice that these shadow lines are a little they're a little sharp, and I, I want to kind of tone them down a bit, so I'm going to go back to the shadows. And I'm going to select my eraser tool with brush again, and you can see that these little fuzzy images here. To get this box to come up, you just left-click, and it brings up that. But that's too much of a radius here, so dialing it down, that's about right. And I can kind of smooth out. Let's smooth it out a bit. Like this that looks better. Looks a lot better. Okay. And this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to stop it here. But basically, you get the idea of what you can do. So shadows and highlights. Now quickly, what I would do at the end of this, um, I would save this file. And I'm saving it, I should save it as a Photoshop document, PSD. And then to make this image final, I would flatten it, layer, flatten, and then save as. You can save it as a PDF or a JPEG. And then that's it. You've got your final, final character render. Now, you can go ahead and color the background if you have more detail. Again, I just was coloring a character to show you the techniques, but we we'll continue on with this, color the background, color this little rock here, or whatever you have in your background for your characters. So hopefully this video tutorial was helpful uh, to show you some coloring techniques using Photoshop elements. Thank you.